good evening everyone so today i will be teaching about cell which is the unit of life and uh, this will just be the lecture one that in this i will just introduce what is cell and what are the different types of cells like eukaryotic cells and prokaryotic cells which are which exist so what is it that makes an organism living or what is it that makes a living organism different from a non living thing so one thing that differentiates between the living and the non living is the cell cells are the basic unit of life and it is present in all the living organisms so all the living organisms are composed of cells depending on the number of cells which are present in any organism they can be divided further into two types that is unicellular organisms as the name suggests uni means single so unicellular organisms are the organisms that are single cell similarly the other types of organisms are multicellular organisms and as the name suggests multi means many so multicellular organisms contain are composed of many cells unicellular organisms since they are made up of only single cell therefore the cell must be able to perform all the functions which are important for the survival and must have an independent existence so we can say that cells since they are able to perform the essential functions of the life and they are able to uh, exist independently therefore they are the basic unit of life anything less than a complete structure of a cell does not ensure independent living therefore as i said cell is the fundamental structural and functional unit of all the living organisms which are present now what are the basic components of the cells so as we can see in this diagram uh, a cell is defined by a boundary uh, for example in any medium if there are many components which are present we cannot define a single entity until or unless it is surrounded by a boundary so basically a cell is uh, distinguished from its surrounding by a boundary and this boundary is known as the plasma membrane so plasma membrane is the delimiting boundary structure of any cell and it provides the medium for the exchange of substances in and out of the cell uh, the fluid like matrix which is a semi fluid matrix which is present inside the cell is known as the cytoplasm it is the main area of all the cellular activities most of the enzymes function in the cytoplasm so most of the metabolism takes place in the cytoplasm next very important thing is the genetic material which in most of the cases is dna so dna is the genetic material which is present inside the cell and it helps in passing the information from one generation to the next generation in the form of genes or we will uh, later see that how the dna helps in the how the dna replication and how the uh, dna transcription and translation helps in passing on the information and <laughs> leads to the formation of many proteins next is ribosome ribosomes are the protein factories of the cell and they are the universal organelles by universal organelles i mean to say that they are present in each of the entities which exist on the earth so uh, the discovery of the cell can be dated back when the time of robert hooke who discovered and termed the cell who discovered and termed the uh, structures which he visualized as cell so basically what he observed was he observed cell walls of dead cells in a cork slice and he found a honeycomb like structure as we can see in this diagram so he found the honeycomb like structure and he named them as cell uh, after that anton van leeuwenhoek saw and described a live cell example bacteria algal cells sperms uh, in the uh, also he visualized the plaque of the tooth and he saw that there are certain living organisms which are present and he called them as cells later robert brown discovered the nucleus uh further the invention of the microscope and its improvement leads to the uh, development of uh, better technologies like the development of electron microscope revealed all the structural details of the cells revealed all the organelles which are present in the cell so basically with the advancement in the technology we get to know what is present what is actually a cell and what is present inside the cell so with time uh, there was a theory that came into existence and this theory was named as the cell theory 
In 1838, Matthias Skeldin, who was a German botanist, he examined a large number of plants and he observed that uh, the plants are composed of different kinds of cells which form the tissues. So tissues are basically uh, uh, the group of cells. So he found that plants are composed of different kinds of cells and uh, that further leads to the formation of a tissue that is group of cells that are able to perform a certain function. So at the same time, another uh, zoologist, Theodor Schwann, in 1839 studied different animal cells and reported that these cells had a thin outer layer, which we now know is a plasma membrane or a cell membrane. Uh, so he also conduct, concluded based on his studies on plant tissues that the presence of the cell wall is a unique character of the plant cells, which is not present in any of the animal cells. So this is one of the define, uh, like differentiating character between the plant cells and the animal cells. So plant cells do not, uh, sorry, plant cells do contain cell walls while the animal cells do not contain the cell walls. They just simply contain the cell membrane. So Schwann proposed the hypothesis that the bodies of animals and plants are composed of cells and the product of cells. And therefore they together formulated the cell theory. And uh, however, there was a limitation to this theory that this theory did not explain how the new cells are formed. So later on, a new uh, like uh, discovery by Rudolf Virchow, who first explained that the cells divide and the new cells are formed from already the pre-existing cell, which is also known as, okay, sure, I'll go a little bit slow. Uh, so, Rudolf Virchow, uh, he was the first one to explain that the cells divide. <coughs> and uh, he said that these cells are formed from the pre-existing cells, and he named it as omnicellular, acellular. And he modified, and further a modification was added to the hypothesis, so earlier the hypothesis just said that uh, the cells, uh, sorry, that all the organisms, all the living organisms are made up of, of the cells. But now a new point was added to this theory that is all cells arise from the pre-existing cell. So cell theory as of now today is first point is all living organisms are composed of cells and products of cells. Second is all cells arise from the pre-existing cells. So, uh, like, no cell can independently uh, arise. It should arise, like, it should have an ancestor and it should arise from the some pre-existing cell. So, this is uh, uh, basically the cell theory historical timeline. What has, uh, what has been observed with time, how the cell theory came into evolution. So this is very important from the aspect of need as well, because most of the questions like who uh, gave what point related to the cell theory and who first discovered the nucleus, who first discovered the cell is are the questions which are basically asked. So uh, for example, firstly, the first compound microscope was uh, invented in 1590. Later on in 1665, Robert Hooke as I told, was the first to visualize cells in the cork slice. Then in 1680, Anton van Leeuwenhoek observed living cells through the simple microscope. Uh, after that, in 1838, Matthias Kelden discovered plants are made up of cells. In the same timeline, around in 1839, Theodor Schwann discovered that animals are made up of cells. And then in 1855, Rudolf Virchow stated that the living cells, all the living cells come from the pre-existing cells, that is omnicellular, acellular. So this is just the summary of what I have told earlier about the cell theory. Any doubts regarding this? If anyone has any doubts or anyone want to ask any question? Okay. If there are none, I think we can move forward. So this is the overview of cell. So in this, we have taken two examples. Basically, two examples have been described. The first one is the onion cells, onion peel cells, which are the examples of plant cell. And the second one is the human cheek cells, which are the examples of animal cells. So onion cells, which is a typical plant cell, as I mentioned, that the plant cells contains a cell wall. So we, uh, there are questions in which we are asked 
to differentiate between the two figures and in those figures in one of the figures we are provided with the cell wall and in the other figure we are just provided with the cell membrane that is a single membrane structure so this is how we can differentiate between a plant cell and an animal cell in in the theoretical or in the diagrammatic questions which which will be asked from us so the onion cells which are an example of a plant cell has a distinct cell wall and uh, its boundary is just within its the cell and within it is the cell membrane while in case of the humans we can say that since they are the animal cells we just have an outer membrane as the delimiting structure of the cell there is no cell wall which is present and inside each of the cell either be it a plant cell or an animal cell there is a dense membrane bound structure which is called as the nucleus so the nucleus is present inside the cell and this nucleus contains the chromosome which in turn contain the genetic material which is the dna and in whole this chromosome and this genetic material is uh, called the nuclei nucleolus so basically uh, all of the components are uh, kind of similar between the plant cells and animal cells first differentiating uh, thing is just the presence of the cell <coughs> now cells are present in varied shapes and sizes their size differ greatly their shapes and activities differ greatly based on the uh, activities they acquire certain shape based on the activities they have a certain size for example uh, we can say uh, the smallest cell this is a very important thing that the smallest cell mycoplasma which is also called pplo pleuronemonia like organisms are the smallest cells and they are only 0.3 micron in length while bacteria on the other hand could be 3 to 5 micron and if i talk about the animal cells they can further be of larger sizes so uh, the largest isolated single cell is the egg of an ostrich among multicellular organisms human blood red cells human rbcs are about 7 micron in diameter and nerve cells are some of the longest cells as we can see that the nerve nerve endings sometimes start from the uh, from our head and they may expand up to our toe so nerve cells are some of the longest cells and uh, the smallest one is the pplo as i mentioned which is around 0.3 micron in size and the cells also vary greatly in their shape they may be disk like they may be polygonal they may be columnar they may be cuboid for example you might have learned about the columnar epithelial cells cuboidal epithelial cells they may be thread like or they may be even irregular and the shape of the cell may vary with the function they perform as i mentioned that the muscles can be of various shape and size based on where they are present for example we have striated muscles so uh, they are of different type uh, based on the uh, basically the shape is different based on the function which they are performing so this is the example of the sizes and the shape of the cells which are present so a typical eukaryotic cell as i mentioned for example the rbcs in human as i mentioned is around 7 micron so a typical eukaryotic cell can be 10 to 20 micron while a bacteria is 1 to 2 micron pplo is around 0.1 micron viruses are around 0.0 to 0.2 micron while if i talk about the shape then rbcs red blood cells are round or they may be biconcave in shape as we can see in this figure white blood cells are amoeboid and they acquire different shapes and structures uh, and since there are different types of white blood cells most of the white blood cells differ from each other in shape and uh, so their shape is called as amoeboid long and narrow that is the columnar shape as i mentioned or cuboidal shape i mentioned so epithelial cells may be columnar or cuboidal nerve cells are branched and long elongated can be a tracheid which is present in plants and mesophyll cells are round or oval <coughs> sorry so there may be different shapes of the cells which are present now based on the uh, uh, so this is the classification this is till now what we have studied is what is a cell why it is called as a basic unit of life what are the different types of organisms based on the number of cells that is unicellular organisms or the multicellular organisms what is cell theory what who propose cell theory what are the different postulates 
which are given in the cell theory and what are the different sizes and the shapes of the cells. The next is what are different types of cell. So basically cells can be divided into two types. The first is the eukaryotic and the second is the prokaryotic. So what is the basis of classification of eukaryotic and prokaryotic cell? So cells that have a membrane bound nuclei are called the eukaryotic. So this membrane bound term is really important when we de decide whether a cell is a eukaryotic or prokaryotic. So in case of eukaryotic cells, the nucleus is itself surrounded by a membrane. While in case of prokaryotic cells, Nucleus is not surrounded by a membrane, as we can see in this figure. It is mentioned as naked DNA. Naked DNA means like the new DNA is just present in the cytoplasm. It is not surrounded by any other membrane. While in case of uh, eukaryotic cells, like in case of plant cells or in case of animal cells, which are a part of eukaryotic cells, we can see that the nucleus is present inside, um, uh, like <coughs> the nucleus is surrounded by a membrane, which is called as a nuclear membrane. So this is the basic classification of eukaryotic and uh, differentiation between the eukaryotic and prokaryotic cell that a eukaryotic cell do have a nuclear membrane while prokaryotic cells lack a membrane bound nucleus. While in both prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells, a semi-fluid matrix called cytoplasm occupies the volume of the cell. So cytoplasm is present in both. As I mentioned, <coughs> cytoplasm is the main area where the cellular activities in both plants and animal cells takes place. Most of the chemical reactions, which are important for the survival of the cell, uh, are, takes place in the cytoplasm itself. Most of the enzymes, most of the protein reactions, most of the mm -hmm. enzymatic reactions takes place in the uh, cytoplasm. So cytoplasm is the main area, main of the cellular activities in both the plants and the animal cells. Beside nucleus, eukaryotic cells have other membrane bound distinct structures. For example, they have endoplasmic reticulum, which is again surrounded, which itself has a membrane, then Golgi complex, lysosomes, mitochondria, and microbodies. So here I want to like <coughs> tell a like the pro. Uh, mention one thing that the prokaryotic cells lack such membrane bound organelle. So basically in prokaryotes we can say that beside nucleus there are uh, no membrane bound uh, sorry uh, like nucleus there is no other membrane bound organelle. So in prokaryotes there is no membrane bound organelles which are present while in case of eukaryotes there are many membrane bound organelles like nucleus, Golgi complex, endoplasmic reticulum, Lysosomes, mitochondria, and microbodies are present. Uh, ribosomes are present in both. As I mentioned, ribosomes are the universal organelle which are present in both prokaryotes and eukaryotes. So they are non-membrane bound organelles which are found in all the cells in both eukaryotes as well as prokaryotes. And within the eukaryotic cells, ribosomes are found not only in the cytoplasm, but also on the surface of the endoplasmic reticulum. This we will discuss later in the later lectures when we will study animal cells or the plant cells in detail. But for now, it is important to know that ribosomes are not only present freely in the cytoplasm, but they are also membrane bound. So they are present on the membrane of the endoplasmic reticulum. And the presence of these ribosomes on the membrane of the endoplasmic reticulum give it a rough structure. That is why the endoplasmic reticulum on which the ribosomes are present are known as rough endoplasmic reticulum. While the endoplasmic reticulum on which no ribosome is present, they are known as smooth endoplasmic reticulum. So uh, ribosomes may be present on the endoplasmic reticulum or they may be present in the cytoplasm. And within the two organelles, chloroplast in plants and mitochondria. So ribosomes may be present in the cytoplasm or they may be present on the surface of ER. If they are present on the surface of ER, then we call it as rough endoplasmic reticulum. And they may be present in the chloroplast in plants and mitochondria. Animal cells contain another non-membrane bound organelle, which is called centriole. And this helps in the cell division. So basically, 
in animal cells two organ leaves like ribosomes and the centrioles are the ones that are non membrane bound which do not have membrane and the rest of the organ leaves have the membrane similarly uh, while in case of prokaryotes there are no membrane bound organ leaves here i want to tell a short trick uh, which is called as namak namak stands for nucleus mitochondria and chloroplast so this i will tell you later also that nucleus mitochondria and chloroplast that is namak is just the short form or you can say a trick to remember that these three organelles are the ones which are double membrane bound like instead of a single membrane they are surrounded by a double membrane so what are these three organelles these are uh, like nucleus mitochondria and chloroplast so i hope it is clear till here what are eukaryotic cells and what are prokaryotic cells so uh, the next is some practice questions before proceeding further to the uh, advanced topic so what is the basic unit of life anyone who would like to answer in the chat or can unmute and answer okay so we know that the basic unit of life is the cell who first explained that the new cells arise from the pre existing cells so uh, the one who explained that the uh, new cells arise from the pre existing cell was rudolf furcho and that was also the second postulate of our cell theory that the new cells arise from the pre existing cells that is omnicellular age cellular what is the main area for the cellular activities in a cell so as i mentioned in all the previous slides that cytoplasm is the main arena for all the cellular activities that held in the cell for all the enzymatic reactions for most of the for most of the enzymatic reactions that held in the cell so cytoplasm is the main arena where most of the cellular activities takes place now which of the following is the smallest cell as i mentioned nerve cell was the one which was largest egg ostrich was also large so uh, largest human cell was nerve cell while the largest cell was the egg of ostrich mycoplasma was the smallest cell which was around 0.2 to 0.3 micron and so the correct answer is the mycoplasma next is in both prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells a semi fluid matrix called dash occupies the volume of the cell so the answer of this should be in both prokaryotes and eukaryotes the semi fluid matrix which is called as the cytoplasm occupies the volume of the cell and it is the main arena for the activities of the for the, all the cellular activities the next question is which of the following is correct so the correct answer for this question is cytoplasm the next is which of the following is correct regarding the cell theory option 1 all living organisms are composed of cells and product of cells option 2 new cells arise from pre existing cells option 3 living organisms are not composed of cells and option 4 both 1 and 2 so basically we know that the cell theory states that all living organisms are composed of cells and products of the cells so option uh, third is uh, wrong incorrect and we also the second postulate which states that the new cells arise from the pre existing cells that is omnicellular is cellular so the correct answer should be option number 4 both 1 and 2 next question is which of the following statement is not correct so plant cells have a cell wall as the outer boundary and just within it is the cell membrane second option is mycoplasma the smallest cells are only 0.3 micron third option is nuclear envelope is present in prokaryotes fourth is the shape of the cell may vary with the function they perform so we have been asked in this question which of the following is not correct so we know that the plant cells have a cell wall as their outer boundary and within it the cell membrane is present so the option number 1 is correct second is we know that the smallest organism is the smallest cell is mycoplasma which is around 0.3 micron so option 2 is also correct option 3 states that nuclear envelope is present in prokaryotes 
we know that the prokaryotes are the organisms in which the nucleus is not surrounded by any membrane so therefore uh, option number 3 which states that nuclear envelope is present envelope by envelope we mean membrane so nuclear envelope is present in prokaryotes so option number 3 is incorrect so the uh, which of the following so the since the question asked which of the following statement is not correct so the correct answer is nuclear envelope is present in prokaryotes because this is a wrong statement next is cell wall is a unique structure of plant cells who concluded this so <coughs> we know that while studying the cell theory it was theodor schwann who concluded that cell wall is a unique structure of plant cells so the correct answer is option number 2 that is theodor schwann who concluded that the cell wall is a unique structure of plant cells and plant cells are composed of cell walls within which within which the cell membrane is present the next question is what are the uh, what do a b c and d represent in this figure so we from this figure firstly we can have a idea that this figure is of a animal cell since it only contains a single membrane so therefore since only the plasma membrane is present there it is of a animal cell so we can go one by one so the outer membrane is definitely the plasma membrane next the uh, uh, in inside the cell what is present so inside the cell we know that most of the cell is uh, filled with the semi fluid matrix which is the cytoplasm so this sky blue color here represents cytoplasm so b is what b is cytoplasm option c uh, here uh, pointed towards the nucleus which is uh, present inside the cytoplasm and which is itself a membrane bound structure so this c here represents the nucleus and the option a which is the membrane of the nucleus represents the nuclear envelope or the nuclear membrane so what are option a b c and d so a represents the nuclear envelope b represents the cytoplasm c represents the nucleus itself and d represents the cell membrane or the plasma membrane so <coughs> the next question is we have to match these following with the with their sizes so we know that mycoplasma have a size range of 0.3 micron human erythrocytes have a size range of 7 micron typical bacteria are size range of 1 to 2 micron and pplos which are the smallest organisms or the smallest uh, living organism that is pleuronemonia like organisms have a very small size of 0.1 micron so basically uh, these are the correct answers of this question so until now is it clear or uh, any doubts in any of the questions okay hoping all the questions are clear moving forward to what is prokaryotic cells in pretty so uh, the prokaryotic cells are represented by bacteria blue green algae that is bga mycoplasma and pleuronemonia like organisms so as i mentioned earlier also uh -huh. since sorry any doubts okay so as i mentioned earlier also in prokaryotic cells no well defined nucleus is present so by most important characteristic of prokaryotic cell is no well defined nucleus so the genetic material is basically made not enveloped by any nuclear membrane so nucleus is not uh, well defined why it is not well defined because it does not have any membrane and since there is no nuclear membrane which is present genetic material is basically naked by naked i means it is freely present in the cytoplasm no organelles like the ones which are present in eukaryotes are found in prokaryotic cells ma'am what is the difference between pplo and mycoplasma okay so basically pplo is a like mycoplasma also you can say it is a pplo like organism so these organisms pplo is a different organism as compared to mycoplasma but uh, 
that are uh, so mycoplasma are basically the free living organisms and they are the uh, these organisms basically like the cell walls so uh, mycoplasma is uh, uh, when it is present in the when it causes the infection and when it is present in the pleural flu so it was found that the uh, so mycoplasma was basically found to be related to the infections in, uh, related to the pleural fluid. So when it was found related to infection in the pleural fluid, it was named as the pleuronemonia like organ. So uh, basically prokaryotes do not have well-defined nucleus and uh, they do not have any organelles which are present in the eukaryotes. So uh, unlike eukaryotes, like they do not have any Golgi apparatus or any uh, like endoplasmic reticulum and uh, other organelles which are present in the eukaryotes that we will discuss later and we will talk about the eukaryotic cells and uh, as i mentioned ribosome is present in both prokaryotic cells and eukaryotic cells so but prokaryotes have something very unique in the form of inclusions so these are known as the inclusion bodies and uh, all prokaryotes have a cell wall surrounding the cell membrane except in the mycoplasma. So this is the basic structure of a prokaryotic cell in which a cell wall is present. Inside the cell wall, cell membrane is present. Then we have a circular chromosome which is present. And we have another different chromosomes which are different from the main genetic chromosome which is known as the plasmid which is present in the prokaryotic cells. These prokaryotic cells mostly have the flagella that helps in the movement of these uh, prokaryotic cells and cilia and flagellas are present on the, cell, on the cell surface and they have the ribosome that helps in the protein synthesis. So in addition to the genomic DNA, as I mentioned, the single circular DNA which is present, uh, many bacteria have many small circular DNAs outside the genomic DNAs. And these smaller DNAs are called the plasmids. And the plasmid DNA is important in the sense that it helps the bacteria to have a different ability. For example, the resistance to the antibiotics. We know that the, there are many bacteria which are getting resistant to the antibiotics. So this is because of the presence of the resistance gene against the antibiotics, which is present not in the uh, main chromosome but in the plasmid so we can have a plasmid that contains a gene which makes the bacteria resistance to ampicillin or we can have a plasmid which have a gene that makes the bacteria resistant to some other antibiotics like penicillin so uh, these plasmids confers the unique phenotypic characters to the bacteria based on the genes or based on the uh, like based on the genes which are present on these plasmid DNA. So as I mentioned, one such character is resistance to antibiotics, which is very important and it plays an important role uh, in the, yes. What is plasmid M? Sorry, what is plasmid? Tell okay. me about plasmid. Yes, yes. So basically uh, what happens is in case of prokaryotic cells, we have a main chromosome, which is a circular chromosome, right? So it contains the genetic information. But besides this, we have some other smaller DNAs which may or may not be present. Like these plasmids are uh, not the necessary part of any prokaryotic cell, while the circular chromosome is the necessary part. So it is the main genetic material. But plasmids are not the main genetic material. They are present outside the genomic DNA. By saying so, I mean to say that they are like as we can see in this diagram, you can see that there is a main circular chromosome, while there are other smaller DNA fragments or uh, DNAs which are present. This, these are not the genomic DNA. These are the ones which are the uh, plasmid DNA and uh, they confer the unique phenotypic characters. For example, as I said, that they help in the uh, attaining the antibiotic resistance. So plasmid most of in mostly in most of the cases plasmid helps in the survival of the bacteria or in the harsh conditions for example it prevents the death of the bacteria in the presence of antibiotics so for those bacteria in which the plasmids have that antibiotic resistance gene they will be able to survive in the antibiotic while those bacteria which do not have the plasmid to uh, 
plasmid against that antibiotic or do not have the plasmid that codes for the antibiotic resistance gene will not be able to survive in that condition. So basically the plasmids are uh, the uh, ones that helps the bacteria to attain a certain unique phenotypic character. So uh, plasmid DNA is also used to monitor bacterial transformation. So when we will uh, in future, or maybe you might have studied in biotechnology when we perform the transformation technique. So transformation is the uh, when we want uh, like a particular gene to be expressed in the bacteria. So this is uh, this is a tra transformation technique which we uh, generally use when we are performing any experiments in the laboratory. So when we want to express any foreign DNA, we perform the transformation. So what we do is we insert the foreign DNA into the bacteria. So this foreign DNA is inserted into the bacteria with the help of the plasmid. So this plasmid DNA is therefore also used to monitor the bacterial transformation with the foreign DNA. So this is about the plasmid. Um, uh, prokaryotes are generally smaller and multiply more rapidly than the eukaryotic cells. For example, we know that in case of uh, E. coli, they just divide and uh, replicate in within the 18 minutes, while eukaryotic cells usually take a larger time in to divide and uh, multiply. <laughs> they may vary greatly in shape and size. The four basic shapes of the bacteria are the bacillus. Bacillus means rod-like, as we can see in the figure spherical that is focus, vibrio which is the comma shaped for example vibrio cholerae and spirulum which is the spiral shape. One more I have mentioned in the figure which is the cocobacillus. So we can see in the figure that cocobacillus is a combination of cocos and bacillus. So it is uh, not completely round, it is not completely rod shaped, it is a kind of oval shaped and this is known as the cocobacillus. Uh, the organization of the prokaryotic cell is fundamentally similar even though prokaryotes exhibit a wide variety of shapes and functions. So the next is the prokaryotic cell, prokaryotic cell envelope and what are its modifications. So most of the prokaryotic cells, especially the bacterial cells have a chemically complex cell envelope. Basically a cell envelope consists of three structures. Outermost is made up of glycocalyx followed by the cell wall and then the plasma membrane. So in this figure, as I mentioned, uh, so in, uh, mo in most of the prokaryotes, there are triple layer structure which is present. The innermost is the cell membrane, the next is the cell wall and above that a, a, a complex uh, glycocalyx layer may be present. Although each layer of the envelope performs distinct function, but Togetherly, what their function is to protect the bacteria. So together they act as a single protective unit. Uh, based on the uh, composition of the cell wall, bacteria are divided in, bacteria are divided into two classes. So they may be divided as uh, gram positive or the gram negative based on the gram staining which we which they take. So gram positive when we perform the gram staining over the bacteria and if they appears to be blue, then they are called as gram positive. And if they are, if they appear to be pink or reddish type, they are said to be gram negative bacteria as they have, they are stained with the cephalin. So glycocalyx differs in the composition and thickness among different bacteria. And it could be a loose sheath or slime like in some, while it may be thick and tough, which is called as the capsule in some other organisms and the cell wall determines the shape of the cell and provides a strong structural support to the bacteria from bursting or collapsing so cell wall as a whole is the yes Ma what is gram negative or gram positive huh. so uh, i will explain in more details about the gram positive and gram negative cell wall so there are differences in the uh, chemical composition what are the composition of the cell wall so uh, most of like the main composition of the cell wall is the peptidoglycan and lipopolysaccharides, right? So 
there is a difference in the uh, amount of the peptidoglycan versus the amount of the polysaccharide which is present in the gram positive versus the gram negative and based on that uh, based on the amount of the lipopolysaccharide which is present in the gram positive and the amount of lipopolysaccharide which is present in the gram negative these uh, bacteria either acquire the crystal violet color uh, which is the uh, sorry ha huh, these bacteria either acquire the blue bluish uh, purple color or the pink color which is of the saffronin so if they acquire the blue color or purplish color these are the gram positive bacteria this is because they contain a very like uh, it is it will be better if i'll explain the gram staining in detail in the next class i think that will make it more clear that why we are calling it as gram positive and gram negative so when in the next class i will explain about the uh, structure of the cell wall of gram positive or the gram negative or in general the bacteria as a whole in detail i think that time it will become more clear is it okay if i'll take it up in the next class like what are gram positive and what are gram negative for now i think it is better if you understand like this that in uh, like the gram based on the staining procedure which was defined by gram so uh, 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 since the it was based on the name of the scientist to give the staining procedure for the bacteria so based on the cell wall composition of the bacteria bacteria either takes up the purple color or they takes up the pink color so if they takes up the purple color we classified them as gram positive and if they takes up the pink color we classify them as gram negative but what is the actual principle behind why they are taking as purple color or pink color uh, for that i think i need to mention a, i need a diagram that will help me to explain it in better details so i'll take up it in the next class for sure glycocalyx differs in composition and thickness as i mentioned and the cell wall as a whole helps in preventing the bacteria from bursting and collapsing so thereby having a protective function uh, the next is the plasma membrane which is semi permeable in nature so it allows certain molecules to pass while it does not allow other molecules to enter and interacts with the outside world this membrane is similar structure to that of the eukaryotes so cell membrane is similar in both prokaryotes and eukaryotes a uh, special membranous structures called mesosomes which are the characters of prokaryotes are formed by the extension of the plasma membrane into the cells so uh, these mesosomes basically uh, these extensions can be in the form of vesicles tubules or the lamellae depending on the shape with which they are forming and they help what uh, is the function of mesosome so basically mesosomes helps in the cell wall formation they help in the uh, dna replication and distribution of the daughter cells and they also help in respiration secretion process to increase the surface area and they also have the enzymatic content that helps in the like uh, that helps in the cellular activities of the cell in some prokaryotes like cyanobacteria cyanobacteria are blue green algae there are other membranous extensions into the cytoplasm which are called as chromatophores as the name suggests chroma is always related to the word relate wherever we are talking about the pigments so chromatophores are the extensions which contains the pigments so uh, bacterial cells may or may not have these extensions and if they have they have like for example as i mentioned in blue green algae so they have chromatophores that provide the color to the bacteria bacterial cells may be motile or non motile motile means they have the ability to move non motile means they, they do not have the ability to move if motile like in order to move they require something which helps them to propel and they which helps them to move forward so if motile they have thin filamentous extension in the cell wall which is called as the flagella so this is the basic diagram and the bacteria show a range in the number and arrangement of flagella and it mainly composed of three parts filament which is the longest part hook and the basal body so the filament is the longest portion and extends from the cell surface to the outside and hook is present inside uh, is embedded inside the cell wall and the basal body is present completely in the cell wall and the cell membrane 
besides flagella there are certain other uh, uh, organelles like uh, there are certain uh, filamentous structures which are present like villi and fimbri and these are the, these are also the surface structures that do not have the role in the motility so what are the functions of the pili and fimbri so basically pili helps in the movement of the uh, sorry pili helps in the attachment of the bacteria and fimbri uh, like these are made up of special proteins which are known as the pyrin proteins and fimbri are the small bristle like fibers sprouting out of the cells in some bacteria they are like in they also helps in the attachment and uh, uh, in some cases these are also the root of the uh, sorry in some cases the pilus formation that is the pilin helps in the uh, this pili helps in the transformation or the transfer of the genetic material from the one bacteria to the another bacteria through conjugation so maybe later uh, we will see what is conjugation so through conjugation this pili formation helps in the attachment this pili helps in the attachment of two bacteria and dna gets transferred from one bacteria to another bacteria so there are certain ways by which this dna gets transferred so one of them is the conjugation and in that pilus pili plays an important role the next is the prokaryotic ribosomes and the inclusion bodies so as i mentioned in prokaryotes ribosomes are present in eukaryotes ribosomes are present but the uh, composition and the subunit of the ribosomes differ in prokaryotes and eukaryotes so in prokaryotes ribosomes are associated with the plasma membrane of the cell and they are about 15 to 20 nanometer in size they are made up of two subunits they have a larger subunit and they have a smaller subunit so basically uh, it is composed of two subunits which is 50s and 30s this 50s and 30s 50s is the larger subunit and 30s is the smaller subunit these both together uh, leads to the formation of prokaryotic 70s ribosome here s stands for the swedberg unit or the sedimentation unit ribosomes are as i mentioned are the site of the protein synthesis and in case of prokaryotes several ribosome may attach to a single mrna leading to several protein formations and uh, several ribosomes may attach to a single mrna and form a chain called polyribosomes or polysomes so basically as we can see in this figure that this black color is the mrna so on the single mrna these blue colored structures which are the ribosomes are present so many ribosomes are present on the single mrna leading to the formation of a structure which is known as the polyribosome or in short polysome so the ribosomes of a polysome translate the mrna into the proteins leading to multiple protein formation at the same time now what are inclusion bodies so these are the reserved material in the prokaryotic cells that are stored in the cytoplasm in the form of the inclusion bodies and again these are not bounded by any membrane system and lie freely in the cytoplasm for example they may be a phosphate granule or they can be a another pigmented granule like cyanophycian granules or glycogen granules gas vacuoles may also be formed in and they are found to be present in some blue green algae and purple and green photosynthetic bacteria so related to prokaryotes there are certain questions which i have mentioned so in prokaryotes a specialized differentiated form of cell membrane structure is present which is called as mesozoon so the options like the answer is mentioned here but the options may be mesozoon polysome ribosom or cell wall so the membranous structure is the mesozoon which of the following is not included in the cell wall of prokaryotes glycocalyx we know is present in the cell wall cell envelope sorry cell membrane is a part of cell envelope cytoplasm is not a part of cell envelope it is present within the cell membrane and it is the semi fluid like matrix which is not a part of the cell envelope so cell wall cell membrane and glycocalyx are the part of cell envelope but option number 3 which is the cytoplasm is the uh, is not included in the cell envelope of the prokaryote Uh, question three is mesosomes helps in as we studied just now that mesosomes helps in the cell wall formation 
they helps in the respiration they helps in the secretion processes in the bacteria so all of these options are the correct answers so mesosomes helps in cell wall formation respiration secretion process or the division of the dna in both the daughter cells prokaryotes have what type of ribosome so uh, ats is present in eukaryotes we will study later 70s is the one which is present in the prokaryotes this 70s is made up of two subunits 30s and 50s this we have to remember now what is true for a prokaryotic cell like they are smaller in size they multiply much rapidly than eukaryotes they have they greatly vary in shape and size and all of these so uh, we studied just now that the prokaryotic cells are very small and they multiply very fast they divide rapidly as compared to eukaryotes and they have a variety of shape and size so all of these are the correct answers in prokaryotes resistance to antibiotics is confer conferred by so what are the things what are the property uh, what is the like the presence of what makes the uh, prokaryotic bacteria prokaryotes resistant to antibiotics so the option number 1 is plasmid dna option 2 is ribosome option 3 is cytoplasm and option 4 is genomic dna so as i mentioned plasmid dna is the one that contains the antibiotic resistance gene and therefore makes the prokaryote uh, respective prokaryote resistance to the antibiotic so resistance to antibiotics is conferred by plasmid dna in the prokaryotes now next question is which of the following is an inclusion body ribosomes gas vacuoles nucleus and cell membrane so the correct answer is gas vacuoles gas vacuoles are an example of inclusion bo bodies which are present in the certain photosynthetic bacteria which of the following is a pigment containing membranous extension into the cytoplasm so options are plasmid ribosome chromatophores and cytoplasm so the correct answer is chromatophores as i mentioned also that chroma means color so chromato like something related to chromato is related to colors so uh, pigment are also so something related to colors so which of the following is a pigment containing membranous extension so these are examples are chromatophores which of the following is a membranous extension into the cytoplasm so we know that mesosomes are the membranous extension uh, so we know that the mesosomes are the membranous extensions which extend into the cytoplasm and have varied roles so the correct answer should be option number 3 mesosomes with this i would like to end today's session but uh, in the next session as many of you have the doubts about the gram positive and gram negative bacteria i'll take up that topic in detail so i'll explain what is gram positive why it is called gram positive and what are gram negative and why they are called so so in the next class we'll uh, study that gram positive gram negative thing in detail also if you people have any doubts you are free to ask questions um even if you want to ask it today you may ask it now or uh, if you want to go back and read and want to ask questions in the next class you are welcome to ask questions in the next class should i end the session